Today we will be continuing with our course. We will be continuing with our course. This is of CAE CAM. Now, continuing my previous topic, which is of integrated manufacturing. Right? What we discussed earlier is with respect to your manufacturing methods. Right? Now, on to this, what we will be doing is we will be integrating this same manufacturing methods, particularly flexible and uh, programmable automation methods to get my, our product term. Now in this, what we are doing is basically, there are two terms that I would like you to discuss. First is your lean manufacturing and the six, next is your Six Sigma, right? What do you mean by lean manufacturing, right? Lean manufacturing is a methodology that leads to a reduction in waste that is, that is particularly during the mass manufacturing. Under mass manufacturing process, what we are doing is we will be, the, it will be low variety and high volume rate of productions, right? For this, what we are doing, there will be a lot of wastages, right? There will be a lot of wastages while manufacturing a particular product. In order to reduce that, we will be implementing few methodologies to reduce the overall waste, right? These methodologies we are collectively calling it as lean manufacturing. Now, let's say for in this system, the product are manufactured as on required, right? Let's say for example, bottles, right? Bottles, which is of plastic or PLA bottles, PET bottles, which are of common use, right? Can be easily manufactured under short duration of time. So. If you have mass manufacturing pet bottles, as on when required, right? Let's say I am getting an order of 100 copies. For those 100 copies only, I will be manufacturing. Or for 1000 volume, I will be able to produce my pet bottles 1000 quantity. In all the cases, we will be creating and approving the same. During this, what happens? If you want to go for mass manufacturing, without considering the lean manufacturing, of course, we will be performing particularly. We will be wasting a lot because we will be creating the bottles before you are getting orders and these might get degraded or not up to the mark for the end user to use over a period of time, right? For that, we are supposed to stock them, hold them tight and protect them until unless they are sold. So, in order that is nothing but it's a waste of the resources as well as manpower in every other term. So, in order to reduce that, we will be reducing the waste. Right, particularly as and when required by the use of or by manufacturing as required. Right, and following this philosophy throughout the product cycle, it is possible to reduce the amount of storage at each stage and thereby the reduction of large amount that is hidden cost of your final product. Now, let me discuss this clearly. Right, for me, what I am supposed to do is we will create a PET bottle. Right, a pet bottle, let's say for any Coca Cola bottle, whatever it is, you want 1000 quantity. Now, add 2000 quantity later on. Right, instead of producing all 3000 at a time, right, 3000 at a time, what my lean manufacturing methodology says is basically to order or to make whenever the requirement comes. For example, for now, I am having a thousand quantity order quantity which I require now. What will the process that I will be doing is basically creation of raw materials or storing them in raw material to my machine, right? This machine to my product, product to market, right? And during each stages, what we will be basically doing is we will be storing the raw materials, storing a product over a period of time. It can be due to the delay of machines or it can be due to the delay of order, everything. Right? Now, in this, if you make only 1000 quantity as was when required, we will be using raw materials only for 1000 quantity, which is required. The machine period for a period of producing only 1000 bottles, including the losses, as well as the product, you will be marking the same. Right? That keeps your demand as well as the supply constant. Let's say you are creating all your 1000 or 1000 plus 2000 which includes for 3000 quantity at a certain time you are supposed to store raw material for 3000 quantity although it is not required machine 
supposed to work for the whole 3000 quantity of bottles produced right all the 3000 quantity of bottles are supposed to be stored out of which only 1000 will be going out as per the demand whereas other 2000 will be going to your stock or storage right so in this what you happen basically is this time taken or the resources that are you are being you are utilizing in order to generate this 3000 and storing this 1000 will be are the hidden costs that are not acceptable in the industry right in order to reduce those what we will be doing we will be creating the quantity as on when required to maintain or to reduce the hidden costs that are associated because the final cost of the product let's say either 1000 or 2000 or whatever the quantity may be these are the costs uh, associated by during this right this also can include the logistics right distribution many more right these are all the qualities that are available or the cost that are adding up to your final cost of the product and increasing its final value right now coming to your six sigma what is this six sigma suggest is basically it's a defection reduction process right defection or defection defective reduction process let's say you are creating a component of thousand companies similar to what we had discussed earlier pet bottles right these pet bottles will be produced using low molding technique right right and which which uses basic mold basic mold process basic molds to get your bottle shape right it's a basic process that all the thing will follow now in this what happens basically is out of the thousand quantity that you are supposed to prepare mold let's say for any if you are using a lower cast material of mold material it can only has or it can only suggest for 950 quantity of perfectly created bottles right and other 50 will be your quantity will be your defects right now what is the six sigma say is basically use the data right use the data that has already been available either from the manufacturer of your competitor or any other manufacturer use the data to get your data out right data for your material data for your raw materials everything right use the data to reduce these defects particularly this 50 defects right in order to reduce the defects what you can do is basically you can change the mold right you can change the mold basically at 500 quantity to get all the thousand quantity of bottles at a less defects or else change the mold material right or include few amenities or accessories let's say cooling or lubricant all right all these are act either exercise your mold or in change your mold material or change your mold change rate right during this what happens is basically overall during the whole manufacturing process the defection ratio or the defects that occurs in a simultaneous process will be getting reduced right that reduction based on the data based on your statistical data and you are getting is your six sigma processes right sometimes whenever you are increasing uh, inclusing uh, enclosing your six sigma as well as your lean data particularly lean manufacturing six sigma plus Lean manufacturing. Sometimes these two are also employed together to form your
प्लेन सिग्मा मेथड और अप्रोचेस This includes completely your slain sigma as well as six. For six sigma as well as slain manufacturing methodologies to enhance the overall production quality in any organization, right? And six sigma is also data driven method to achieve a near perfect quality. Whereas six sigma analysis can focus on any one element of production or service, right? Whether it can be dependent on the service to reduce how well you are serving your customers or to reduce the production and has strong emphasis on statistical analysis of design manufacturing and consumer oriented activities right now we will continuing our to our next topic which is of cat cam hardware right earlier what we are discussed is basically what is the basis of creating your or till the computers will be available for what kind of processes now in order to get our things right we will be discussing How well the hardware is available, right? For any hardware, any computer hardware, as the chances of CAD or CAM, you will be having a central processing unit, right? A central processing unit which processes the data that is coming from or is being taken back from the memory to give a certain output in accordance to the input, right? Let me just read it. A central processing unit. will elaborate the same a central processing unit which consists of your internal resistors controller as well as arithmetic and logic resistor right and a primary controller which controls the data flow to as well as away from your main memory right the main memory which stores data right this stores data that is available and the data will be retrieved or taken back or stored the data can be stored or retrieved back from the controller in which is present in your central processing unit right as the data is to be modified or manipulated can be done through arithmetic and logic registers right the data will be coming to and from back and the same data is supposed to be entered into your internal registers as a journal entry right for example as we will be utilizing a particular lab facility we will be entering or we will be entering our names as a record that these are the particular names with this particular data sets that we have used right now this controller is basically controlled by your auxiliary memory which is nothing but your simple hard drive if any data is required or it is to be required from your auxiliary memory we will be connecting from the same and input output devices these input output devices will be giving you feeds towards the controller either to operate or display the data out of it right what are the types of memories available right first is your read only memory second is prom which is stands for programmable read only memory next is the random access memory erasable rom and eprom as well as flash drive these are your various semiconductor memory units that are available for the use under cat cam hardware basically whenever we will be buying a system or any other system, any other cat cam related software or hardware first we will be having your read only memory this stands for any memory that it can be stored without access i mean can be only accessed not edited particularly your dvd rom right and p rom which stands for your upgraded version of your rom which is somewhat programmable somewhat controlled whereas for random access memory which is similar to your ram which you already call it as for which what will be doing basically is we will be enhancing or we will be utilizing the same or in order to store bulk data we will be processing the bulk data under minor forms one after the other and it will be storing any data or any intermediate data that is supposed to be stored on it next is eprom and eeprom are basically few programmable memories or shorter memories that are available on to your memory cards as well as tablets right these will basically store minor data and can be easily retraced or erased basically basically on your electronic devices these are on your conductor chips 
and the last is a flash memory some microcontrollers particularly let's say esp esp or any other audio will be having certain amount of flash memory so which you are supposed to flash and let the microcontroller to let the microcontroller to do certain amount of work right that amount of work you are supposed to put an interface for example let's say usb right as soon as you plug your memory the usb will create a small bridge from your device or particular to hardware system or your cpu to your memory card it will create a small bridge during which the data transfer takes place and how does it know basically to create that particular bridge is you will be embedding it into a flash memory right and a flash memory that bridge data or to how the process of forming a bridge or how the data is being access is defined under this next the input devices the devices through which the user or an operator communicates with the computer by feeding it the necessary information either it can be both graphical or alphanumerical as and when required right these are the devices for example your keyboard and in my hand it's a simple pen or a digitizer right and a keyboard which we can already see mouse light pen joystick these are tablet and scanner all these are my input devices through which i can feel give my feedback in for example in now related to your cat cam i want to create a line in this manner right i want to create an object right this will be my object that i want so in order to input the data that i have basically i can give it under input devices right this will be my digitizer which digitizes all the data that i want the system to have in digital form now coming to your display devices basically a display devices it is a one of your output devices right and it's an important element under cat cam system since most of the design work and simulation can be should be graphically displayed and any graphical display uses three modes basically one is a cathode ray display plasma display panel display and liquid crystal display now what is my cathode ray display let us understand the cathode ray display first a heater which is heated so that a cathode emits electrons right cathode ray emit electrons which are accelerated through the grid and are focused on to the screen or the tube right as they are focused based on the polarities of these deflector plates particularly the vertical or horizontal deflectors the electron gets deflected to a certain point either from the center or away from the center right based on the polarities or based on the requirement the electron gets separated or deflected now as the electron gets deflected you will be that will be forwarded or sent back towards your phosphor body on the screen right what is the property of a phosphor is basically it absorbs your electron which emits a light right the light that can be seen on the screen right now this happens under very minor minor second sometimes the metal coating sometimes an electron might skip the deflectors and contact to any of the other surfaces of your crts so what we, for that what you will do we will be including a metal coating to deflect the electron back wherever as required right now in this case the whole process takes place under very minor second right and in order to cover that what will be doing in order to get a clear picture this whole takes place under number of cycles or number of steps per second right that is also called as your hertz right hertz of per second right now in this now in this let's say first point a first electron gets deflected to its first point here second to here third to here
right? It will continuously get deflected wherever it is required in order to form a complete pizza. So under this, what happens is basically you will be having two ways to display your picture or anything. First is your stroke type or stroke writing. Second is your raster scan graphics. Right? We will discuss in both in further way. First, what you must stroke writing is as soon as it gets hit to a point A, right, in a complete screen, right, by changing the position of the next upcoming electrode, right, by changing the position of next upcoming electrode, we are able to write it under a line. It can be a line or it can be a picture any form right based on the coordinate data we will be positioning them accordingly according to the screen coordinate data we will position your light or an electron at a certain point onto the phosphor voting to get your picture out right whereas for raster scan we will be splitting them completely under different cells also called as pixels that you will be focusing on this raster scan graphics we will be discussing again more but in order to maintain, right, whatever the phosphor is, basically, it will absorb the energy coming from the electron and it will subdue over instantly over a period of time. So, in order to maintain that, in order to maintain a picture or a light at a particular point, what we will be doing is basically we will be increasing the rate at which it is getting so the electron is getting out. So, for that, you are doing certain amount of cycles per second right we will be discussing this further and before going to hard copy devices let me just complete my plasma panel display right what is the plasma panel display is basically you will be having simple box which consists of neon gas right or inert gas which is an inert gas Right, these gets these are guys and these gases are neutral and they doesn't react with much. So whenever in the same case of your CRT, whenever an electron gets pushed to a certain point of your neon gas or inert gas, the it gets absorbed, right, and it appears as a point, right, in the same way. Whenever you are going for LCD, you will be having a thin film of liquid crystals which align themselves based on the polarity or based on your uh, potential field. Right? Regarding LCD, we will discuss further. First, let us compare to hard copy devices which are graphical printers plotters as well as photograph devices. Once you are uh, satisfied with your work on your display and it is fine to see my update is looking good or my product is looking good, you are supposed to take a printout or to get a hard copy at the end, which are by using your graphical printers or plotters or photograph devices. What does a graphical printer do is basically it will generate a graph based on the data that you acquire, right? based on the coordinate system that either you define or that the machine automatically takes you will be getting a graph plot based on that plotters will also do the same but and the last is the photographic devices which hold you the clear picture under three dimensional scale right it can be 2 d or it can be color or black and white but you will be getting a clear picture how well in hard copies and how well you will be storing the data is Permanent storage of the programs and data that has been generated during various sessions of CAD CAM, which require a large amount of storage space, particularly to store the, all the versions, all the data that has been generated in a complete product life cycle. And it is normally denoted as an auxiliary storage, which includes your floppy disk, Winchester disk, magnetic tapes, magnetic cartridges, compact disk ROMs, as well as DVD ROMs.
right? All these are your additional auxiliary memories that you can that are portable and can be carried by the user to perform or to get, uh, transfer the data from one of your hardware system to your other hardware system, right? And this will be your software that we will be discussing. Till now, what we have discussed is regarding CADCAM hardware. Now, coming for software, the software will include the system software which has an operating system, an editor, debugger, as well as linker. System software will control all the hardware, hardware to function accordingly from one system to the other. Right? Whereas for programming languages, which are again two basic types, one is for interpreter and a compiler. Compiler at the full low level or high level. What does a compiler do basically is it will run the code and it will see how well it has been formatted, right? It checks for the formats, it checks for the values, everything in a logical manner. Whereas for interpreter, it converts your basic code from the compiler to a machine level code or in form of digital, that is zeros and ones. Whereas for utilities, particularly few utilities such as your correcting your storage devices onto your disk, onto your hardware, in what way they are getting corrected. And at last is your applications. Applications basically your software onto which you will be doing your CAD or CAM model. What is CAD, CAD CAM, APT, FM or DVMS. Right? What is the CAD is for? Your design. The CAD CAM is for manufacturing as well as design and analysis, programming, and PEM is for again analysis, and DBM is for storage. Storage of your data that is being generated for the whole product life cycle. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.